I'm sorry, what are you expecting? Someone else? Hey, th this is high for a short guy. Take it easy on me. I was like five feet tall just now. Hey, welcome! <laughs> welcome to the Not Scary Farm 2016 preview! <laughs> Tonight, we're going to tell you everything in Not Scary Farm. There goes my car, hold on. Take it off. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Screw the 91. Back it up. <laughs> there we are. Well, welcome everybody. Are you ready to find out what's on tap this year for Not Scary Farm? Oh, come on! Thank you all for coming out tonight. Is there any better way to spend a Thursday night than talking about Halloween? I am Jeff Tucker. Welcome. We're being streamed live around the globe. So welcome everybody looking and watching and thinking and hoping. And everything is going to be fantastic this year. All right, let me get through my notes here. Your patience has paid off. We're going to tell you everything. I've said that before, right? But I really mean it tonight. All right. No more stay tuned. That's right. All right. So first up in 2016, we're going to talk about the shows. And our first show, well, she needs no introduction. Just roll that footage right there. Hello, darling. I'm back. That's right, it's little old me, Elvira, mistress of the dark, and I'm back for another spooktacular extravaganza. That's right, this year at Not Scary Farm, it'll be me doing my new show, Elvira's Dance Macabre. See you there, and unpleasant dreams. Yeah. Any Elvira fans in the house tonight? Halloween like the greatest holiday ever? Like when I was a kid, that's all I could dream of was Halloween. And Not Scary Farm has found a way to stretch it. It's no longer one night. It's a whole bunch of nights. A new stage and a new chapter in justice. Good citizens of Calico, I ask you, are you ready for a hanging? I said, are you ready for a hanging? The Lawman, everybody, returns in Finding Dory. On our brand new Calico Mind stage. Just keep killing, just keep, everybody. Just keep killing, just keep killing. All right. <laughs> All right. Now we're gonna talk about, are you ready? Where Haunt began. The Scare Zones of 2016. Roll that footage! The scare zones for 2016 right here, where it all began. Let's talk about some of the scare zones. The first one up is Fiesta de los Muertos. It's the night where the veil between the living and the dead is the thinnest. More monsters, more scares right in Fiesta Village. Also, Carnival. The scare zone, they said, would never happen. It's too big, it's too bright and the clowns own it. I don't know anybody that walks through there that isn't terrified of the clowns of Carnival. 
and where Not Scary Farm was born, right here on the streets of Ghost Town. The fog-filled streets are where the screams begin, trust me. All right, here we go. All right, we're going to talk about, you ready for what's returning for 2016? Please welcome the designers of Not Scary Farm, the men behind the madness, John Cook, Daniel Miller, and Gus Kruger. sharp, John. You look sharp. Hey, thanks. All right. So we're going to talk about the returning mazes. And the first one up, if you'll cast your eye right here, they will tell you. the demented mind, Daniel Miller. Well, everyone hates going to the desert with you. The, the bright light in your face, that high-pitched whine, that uncomfortable chair, all those weird people licking into your teeth and tapping. It's, it's just horrible. Um, also, there's the legend of the tooth fairy, which is also creepy, this, this little thing fluttering outside your window creeping into your children's bedroom and stealing their candy. So uh, I really wanted to combine you two, mash them into one maze, and that's where the impetus was for the Tooth Fairy. So you follow our abducted kids into the lair of the Tooth Fairy, and uh, we see him chained into one of the looms. It's really gross, it's disgusting. It's <laughs> you, you were telling me earlier, Daniel, that there's a lot of uh, early exits out of this maze, that uh, people get a couple of rooms in and they gotta get out. Yeah, definitely. Usually right by the second room, you start to hear that uh, high-pitched uh, squeal from the girl, and you're out of there. <laughs> and that's what we love. <laughs> hey, uh, Tooth Fairy, Daniel Miller, hey, real quick, there's a, uh, this is the only um, show where we're encouraging you to be on your phone. Some of you are actually watching me like a regular show. What are you doing? Get on your phone! Sir, are you on your phone? All right. Oh, it scared me for a second there. Everybody needs to be plugged into the internet right now. There's Wi-Fi. All right. Jacked in like the Matrix. All right. The next returning maze right here on the screens. Watch. I'm recording your phone. killed your wife. We could have killed you too, but it was more fun to watch you cry like a baby. You gonna hunt down the Red Hand Gang for the last man? <laughs> There are forces at work here that you will never... <laughs> like I was saying, there are forces at work that you don't understand. Oh, hell. Looks like I'm gonna need some silver bullets. Gunslinger's Grave, Blood Moon Rises from the mind of Gus Kruger. 
That's right, kiddies. The gunslinger's back. The baddest gunslinger of the West is back, and he's facing off against a horde of monstrous werewolves, hell-bent on destroying the Old West and everybody in it. You're going to travel back to that wonderful Old West town. You're going to see the worst, most disgusting bandits you've ever found, the hairiest and scariest werewolves at Knott's Berry Farm, until you face off against the skinwalkers themselves who started this whole mess. It's going to be a hoot, a holler, and a whole lot of screams as the blood moon rises over <laughs> Not Scary Farm this season. Now, Gus, this is, we were talking earlier, this was an interesting maze because it started out as Gunslinger's Grave, and then you get to add this layer to it. W what's it like to like take a maze you've already done and then add a layer to it? Well, honestly, Gunslinger was the first maze that I designed start to finish, and I just love the concept. And, um, you know, generally our mazes have fairly short life cycles, but I really wanted to be able to continue the story because I, it meant so much to me. Um, so what I did is I took uh, the first couple years I wanted to differentiate it from uh, Knots and have it just despicable, evil people doing horrible things. Uh, but then I wanted to take that story and turn it into a more of a not scary farm super supernatural aspect. And that's when I brought out the werewolves uh, because we haven't really done werewolves in such a long time in a maze, and I really wanted to do them justice and uh, have a lot of fun with it and, you know, kill a lot of people. Hey. <laughs> that's, that, that's a good day at work, right? That is a Tuesday. All right. <laughs> Are you ready for one more? Yeah. Watch the screen. Record it. Serpent under the guiding hand of the man in the jacket, John Cook. Everybody, since the 1700s, there's been a dark force brewing in the swamps of Louisiana, and at the heart of this darkness, there's a woman, Marie Laveau. And for those who are seeking out Marie Laveau, there's a man, a gatekeeper, who can help you along your journey. But you must be warned if you go searching for dark magic. Dark magic's gonna find you. Yeah. Uh, again, we were talking earlier. Uh, this maze is interesting. It has no walls. Yeah. What's interesting? You're not actually walking through a maze. You're more walking through an ecosystem. Right. Really. There's no. There's no walls in here. It's an actual, you know, swamp that we have. We have the w actual water that you're walking over on all the docks. You're walking over water. There's little buildings and then all the trees and dirt. It's an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem. Think about that when you're walking through Voodoo. And I and think, uh, yeah, all the, all the leftover snacks left from the monsters, there's actually like a thriving ecosystem inside that maze. <laughs> so we're doing good work. All right. Let's do another one, shall we? Let's take a trip to the end of the street. Tell us about it. Well, everyone loves Halloween. And when I was a kid, I have a very fond memory of dressing up in a cardboard robot suit, uh, taking my pillowcase and going from door to door with my brothers, trick-or-treating and filling out bags with candy. Um, but we always remember that uh, there was, at the end of the street, this rickety old house. And we always would dare each other who's going to push the button and ring the doorbell. So we always kind of envisioned that there was a witch at the end of that uh, doorbell. And uh, that was always the impetus of what Trick or Treat is about. It's classic Halloween. Um, it's the green witch and her tricksters. And uh, there's more uh, treat, there's more tricks than treats. Right. And what's great about it is that a lot of times when you go to these, uh, to our events, we lose sight of the holiday itself. So this is a Halloween-themed maze. So you get pumpkins and carving, and sometimes carving not just pumpkins, but, you know, children. But it's, hey, it's great, right? It's all good. It's all good, right? It's essential Halloween. But beyond that, it's also pretty gory and grim. So We love that. You like gory and grim? 
All right, how about, how about one more? Let's do it. Who's here with us? Show yourself. Use that energy to manifest. Guys, I'm really not feeling good. Whoa! Go, 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 go! Any paranormal fans in the house? There's the guy, John Cook, everybody. In just a few weeks, we're going to be opening up the gates to the Hayden Hill Sanitarium for another live episode of Paranormal Inc. Chad and the gang are going to be detonating their experimental ghost pod in hopes to find concrete scientific evidence of the paranormal. Through different EVPs, spikes in the electromagnetic field, and sudden drops in temperature, this is all evidence that's being built to prove that there is, in fact, life after death. Yeah, and it's all based on fact, isn't it? That's the scary part. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I love it. John Cook, everybody. You love him or what? <laughs> all right. I, I think we have one more. One more returning maze to talk about. Dead of winter, Wendigo's Revenge, we go to Daniel Miller right there in the middle. Well, one thing you guys need to know that tonight, this is an exclusive. So this is the very first time that we've announced that uh, Dead of Winter, Wendigo's Revenge is uh, a part of our uh, stuff. So. <laughs> it's a part of the stuff, guys. It's part of the stuff. Um, I took the reins from uh, Gus Kruger last year, and I wanted to take it and put my own spin on it. Um, this year, as we saw in the video, the queen is dead, and her beasts and minions have ripped her apart. Uh, one thing I do want to say, oh yeah, one thing I do want to say is that uh, there's four new rooms in this. Uh, there's a new facade. Uh, it's much gorier and darker than it's ever been. So it's a whole new experience this year. <laughs> yeah! And we should say that a lot of haunt mazes in its second or third year are moved over to another designer just so they can put their own spin on it. So it's not like, it's, it's just got two designers in it to make it twice as gory, correct? And what the heck's a Wendigo? <laughs> yeah, um, after last year we started talking about what we wanted to do next with um, Dead of Winter, sort of like, you know, with Gunslinger, what's next for that? Uh, Daniel and I collaborated on it, and um, we came up with some stuff, and then he had such a strong vision of where he wanted to take it, it only seemed right to pass the torch to Daniel and just let him go crazy with it. So that's what he's done, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it in its, uh, its new brutal entirety. And Wendigo, or Wendigo, is a man, uh, antelope, no, no, uh, uh, elk, sorry, man, elk, and... Uh, Canadian folklore, folks. Canadian folklore. It's a monster, eh? <laughs> it's a monster. Eh? All right. And it's, it's huge. It's gruesome. It's a whole new effect that we're putting in. And uh, you're going to come face to face with this thing. Face to face with so it. So do your homework so you recognize it when you see him. Yes. All right. Daniel Miller and Wendigo's Revenge, everybody. <laughs> All right. Are you with me? You still with me? Is there anybody not on their phone? Get everybody on their phones. Call your mom. Tell her what's going on. You'll never believe this. Shh. All right. <laughs> Pokemon. All right. I caught a Wendigo. All right. 
And now for something completely different. Check out the screen, won't you? Oh, come on, new for 2016, let's hear it. Roll it. Poison hemlock, no. Necromancy, no. Ugh, rescue zombies. Spirits awoken, no, no. It was last year. Ah, here it is. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Hangman's noose and the killer's hatchet. Claw of a beast and the glass planchette. With the blood of a guest, we soon shall see the creation of a skeleton key. remember the skeleton key from last year, right? For those who want a little more, the skeleton key this year will offer priority access unlimited to all of our mazes. And one-time access to four brand new interactive skeleton key rooms. So let's, uh, let's, let's talk about those, shall we? The first one is... Visions. Mr. Cr <laughs> the Visions Key Room, we're, we're bringing this to life using augmented reality technology. We're going to be giving you guys the Phantom Finder and going to be joining the Paranormal Link crew for another investigation. What's cool about these key rooms is they're not actually part of the mazes. They're separate things. And what we're doing is we're taking the old Haunt Museum and now turning it into the Green Witch Museum, where you guys are going to be able to go in and investigate on your, at your own leisure and what's cool about this, this building, it's, it's not the building that's haunted, but more so the different artifacts that surrounded the Green Witch Trials. All right, so Visions is the first of four key rooms, only available to those key holders. One-time access, and the second key room is... Slasher! Mr. Kruger, appropriately named. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So with Slasher, we wanted to take advantage of our uh, advanced show control systems that we have here in Knoxbury Farm and take our skeleton key pass holders and put you right in the middle of a 1980-style slasher horror film. Uh, so you're going to come Yeah, that guy loves it. Uh, you're going to come face to face with the <laughs> Angel Maker killer. And the only question really is, can you escape, or are you just going to be added to the list of victims? Or, or, or like this guy, like, I, I'll apply for the job, Angel Killer. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta get a key, sir. All right. The third room out of four is Zozo. John, tell us about Zozo. Zozo actually spawned from a personal story uh, that a friend, you know, shared with me, and she is just terrified of Ouija boards, and we thought it would be really funny to take one and put it under her bed. And then we told her it was under there, and she complete mental breakdown ensued after that. And, you know, felt maybe a little bad, but more so just intrigued on why you are so terrified of these, these spirit boards. So we dug a little bit, and she told us that when she was younger, her and a friend were playing with a, a Ouija board, and the planchette kept going back from Z to O, Z to O. Anything they'd ask, Z to O, Z to O. And they didn't think anything of it. They didn't know what it meant. But she started to wake up uh, from these intense like demonic dreams with scratches all over her. And when she Googled what this meant, she was completely petrified of what she found. And I'm not gonna share what she found, but if you wanna look it up, please do. But if not, you can come, <laughs> come sit around the round table. Uh, you can find out for yourself if Zozo is just part of our overactive imaginations or if there's something more to it. Uh, show of hands, how many people are Googling Zozo right now? <laughs> One, two, all right. You come back to us, all right? All right, John, that sounds great. And a lot of people really believe in that stuff, so beware. Mm -hmm. All right. And the last key room, four of four, is Prey. Daniel, you want to tell us about Prey? Farmer Ted 
and his beasts are hungry for blood. Enter this interactive hay maze that changes. Every 30 seconds, a new beast is released and it is completely in the dark. The only way you can see is through a special lantern that we give you. And there's a twist. We control the light. That, that sounds great, Daniel. Is, is the little girl all right? Is she OK? Torn, torn limb from limb. All right, that's great. All right. Thank goodness the lantern's okay. There you are, John. Hey, thanks. All right. Let's pray, everybody, in the key rooms. So they sound pretty good. They sound amazing and heart-stopping. And uh, you can go through them one time each night with your skeleton key, and I think one time will be enough because they sound completely terrifying. Thank you, everybody. All right. All right, is everybody sitting down? Are you ready? I got your phones out. Your, your Twitter machine is going. Who's, who's on MySpace? One guy? Oh, it's Tom. Hey, Tom. All right. We're going to pull back the veil. We're going to pull back the cloak. We're going to put on a cape. And we're going to talk about what's brand new for 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Black Ops Infected, and the man behind the gun, John Cook. So let me explain why we decided to rebrand uh, Special Ops Infected into the all-new Black Ops Infected. At the end of last year, uh, we were sitting down and thinking about what do we do next with this attraction, where do we go? And we felt we had kind of hit our, our limits in Camp Snoopy, so we decided that we were going to take it out of Camp Snoopy. And we're going to bring it backstage. Uh, and two really important, in interesting things happened when we made that decision. The first, we have a completely blank slate. We don't have to worry about Camp Snoopy. We don't have to worry about the kids the next morning. Uh, we were able to fully build a, a Knott's caliber set for this. So we built an entire city for you guys to come and run through and live out your zombie warrior dreams. And it's also introduced a new dynamic. Uh, with, with Camp Snoopy, it was more of a, of a long range you know, firefight you were having with zombies. Now, it's basically close quarter combat. You are face to face, which I really think is going to really up the adrenaline with this attraction to one step closer to that fully realized video game that we've been striving for since day one. And now, the big thing, back to that blank slate, we can also start over with operations. No longer is there a ticketing system for infected. So more like the, the standard haunted attraction we have here, you just come in, jump in line, and go through and blast away some zombies. All right, so to reiterate, it's all new, it's brand new, it's backstage, and you just have to get in line for it. And... and Go ahead. One thing I gotta do, I do, this, I do this every year since the inception of Infected. So we have a thing uh, where our slogan, we get all our zombies hyped, uh, we yell headshots. So on the count of three, I need everyone in this room to yell headshots as loud as you can. Can we do that? One, two, three. 
That was a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah. And your skeleton key gives you priority access to it. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. This is good. Are you ready for this? This is brand new, never before revealed. Are you ready for it? They're ready for it. Kill the lights. In feudal Japan, there is one thing that's held in a higher regard than life itself, and that is honor. In this maze, we're going to follow the footsteps of a disgraced samurai on his quest to redeem his honor through death. Upon death, his soul is released into the gloomy shadowlands. Lurking around every corner are different creatures, ghosts, and spirits pulled straight from the pages of Japanese folklore. And now we got to find out. Are we going to be trapped? Are we going to find what we're looking for? And that is a glorious, glorious death on the battlefield. John, what was your inspiration for Shadowlands? I've been fortunate enough to travel to Japan a few times, and um, I'm always captivated in complete awe of, of the architecture and the different traditions, even down to the graveyards. They just have such a beautiful aesthetic to them. And on top of that, there are just so many amazing stories ghosts and creatures from the folklore that lend themselves so well to a haunted attraction. So what we did is we created this, this realm, this Shadowlands, for all these different stories to come together and exist on a single plane for you guys to be able to walk through. Ladies and gentlemen, John Cook and Shadowlands. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Now, if, at this point, if I said, hey, we're gonna wrap it up and say goodnight, that would be enough, right? Yeah. No! about something else that's new? Watch the screen. The only thing better than one amazing designer on a maze is two amazing designers on a maze. Gus Kruger and Daniel Miller for the Red Barn. Well, let me tell you about the Red Barn. The great man's got a blood-soaked barn to sit on the edge of Calico for the last 150 years. You gotta watch your step when you get a little close, though, because if the gray man doesn't get you, 
One of his sadistic sons will, and they'll take you. They love grabbing unwitting travelers and using them for their own sadistic purposes. The Red Barn is an homage to the 1970s grindhouse horror films. It's grisly, it's gross, it's filled with demonic pigs, horrible hillbillies, and chainsaws. One thing for sure, that video didn't lie. Watch your step, because if you enter the red barn, you don't leave. Again, I ask you, if that was all we had, you'd be great. It would be amazing to go out and start tweeting and on Facebook. How about one more? You have to really want it. One more. If you've, if you've been paying attention, you've realized that Special Ops Infected is now Black Ops Infected, and it's backstage. That leaves the entire front of the park ready and ripe for a brand new scare zone, The Hollow! Journey back into American folklore and discover the Headless Horseman's undead army. Witches, apparitions, and more are lurking in six acres of The Hollow! Thanks for coming out, everybody. Tickets for 2016's Not Scary Farm are on sale right now. But if you want to enjoy every night with no blackout dates, get a season pass if you dare! You guys are the best fans in the world. I'm Jeff Tucker. Good night, everybody. We'll see you in the fog! and gentlemen, if you have a season pass, if you are a season pass holder and do not have an orange checkered wristband, please exit the theater via the lower doors. If you do have an orange and black checkered wristband, please stay in your 